All right. Are you able to hear us? Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, you're yes. audible. Perfect. Yeah, okay. So, a uh, very good morning to all of you. It's evening in India. I welcome you all in my today's talk. And today I'll be talking about hyaluronic acid dihydroatomicinin conjugate. We'll briefly discuss about the synthesis, its characterization, and its in vitro evaluation of its anti cancer activity in lung cancer cells. So, before going into the experimental findings, I would like to br uh, briefly introduce you all with the problem that we are trying to address. So yeah, we are talking about cancer. Cancer is one of the leading cause of death worldwide and there exists a variety of treatments depending on the kind of cancer a patient is having uh, or how advanced the cancer is. Uh, these anti-cancer therapeutics have known uh, toxic side effects and that is the reason why targeted therapy is the one which can reduce these side effects and today we will be focusing over targeted therapy so for targeted therapy we will be utilizing hyaluronic acid uh, for delivering uh, these chemotherapeutics uh, effectively so herein hyaluronic acid is one of the major component of extracellular matrix and uh, it is the cell surface associated polysaccharide this its structure allows uh, sites for esterification and covalent binding, uh, binding with the carrier drugs. Uh, there are reports in which this hyaluronic acid, abbreviated as HA, is being accumulated in the stroma of various tumors, and this proportion can vary depending on the type of cancer a person is having. So, this hyaluronic acid is a clinically potential molecule. Uh, because of its biodegradable nature, it's a natural product, and it's non-toxic, and its hydrophilic nature allows uh, the drug to assess the tumor site because most of the anti-cancerous drugs are hydrophobic, uh, making them inaccessible to the tumor site. And most importantly, it can be utilized for targeted delivery because uh, most of the cancers overexpress HA binding receptors like CD44 and RAM. Both of these are receptors for HA and most of the cancers overexpress these receptors. So uh, incorporating hyaluronic acid in the formulation can uh, effectively deliver your uh, chemo drugs to the cells overexpressing CD44. Uh, so here are some of the uh, recent, uh, I'm just trying to summarize some principal research uh, for devising new chemotherapies using these hyaluronic acid uh, conjugates. So most of the classical anti-cancerous drugs have been conjugated to a hyaluronic acid in order to uh, uh, deliver them target uh, for their targeted delivery. So uh, depending on these findings, uh, a mechanism of these conjugates have been proposed and the me mechanism says that most of the anti-cancerous drugs are hydrophobic in nature and this hyaluronic acid which is a polysaccharide is highly hydrophilic. Covalent attachment of both of them will result in a molecule which will be amphiphilic in nature and hence when kept in aqueous solvents this will self-assemble into a mycelis. This when administered uh, to a uh, patient having cancer or a model of cancer uh, it will be internalized uh, by the cancerous cell using the cd44 mediated receptor mediated endocytosis and then uh, once internalized uh, under different ph and redox condition this assembled particles will be disassembled the enzymes will cleave ha and the drug will be effectively uh, delivered to the cell so with this idea in mind, we use this uh, hyaluronic acid platform for conjugating our drug of interest, which was dihydroartemisinin. So this drug is an anti-malarial drug and recently it has been repurposed as an anti-cancer drug for breast cancer, which is in clinical trials. And uh, because of its anti-proliferative effects, which have been uh, observed in various tumor cell lines. It's always easy to incorporate uh, 
drug which is already in human use or to explore its extra usage instead of uh, devising a new drug because, because it, it has safety issues, it has ethics issues and it takes a bit longer time as compared to, to those drugs which are already FDA approved for human use. So, however, there are two uh, drawbacks of these drugs, which are its poor solubility in aqueous solvent because of its hydrophobic nature. And secondly, uh, it has a short half-life. I mean, it is rapidly metabolized uh, by the uh, system. So in order to address these two problems, we use this hyaluronic acid-based platform for conjugating DHA for anti-cancer purpose. So uh, this is dihydro uh, artemisinin which is our drug of interest which is hydrophobic in nature and this is the structure for hyaluronic acid which we will be using for the targeted delivery they were directly coupled using a sterification reaction to synthesize this conjugate here is the pictorial pictorial representation where you can see the dha which is a hydrophobic molecule is conjugated to this hydrophilic meiotic and when kept in aqueous solution this, they are anticipated to self assemble in the form of nanoparticles which have enhanced permeation and retention effect over cancerous cell line so uh, here is the data uh, you will be seeing the characterization of the synthesized conjugate Yeah, so the synthesis of this conjugate comprised of hyaluronic acid and dihydroartemisinin was confirmed using gel permeation chromatography. So there, there was differences in the retention volumes due to the incorporation of the meiotic. Then we did NMR spectroscopy for the identification of the bonds. And as can be seen, the characteristic signature peak of acetyl peak that represents HA was also present in the conjugate. And then there was shifting of this multiplates from four to six in the final product, confirming bond formation. We also did FTR spectra, spectroscopy for the confirmation and along with the signature peaks of HA and DHA in the final product, we also see a 1730 peak, which corresponds to ester bond, suggesting that the conjugate has been synthesized successfully and uh, it, uh, it is successfully prepared. So next, since uh, we know that our product is an amphiphilic molecule and these amphiphilic copolymers are known to form self-assembled nanoparticles. So we anticipated that our conjugate is also forming a nanoparticle and hence we check the size distribution of the prepared uh, conjugate using dynamic like scattering. And we found that the size, average size of the particles were below 300. That was around 260 nanometer. We checked the surface zeta potential. Uh, the surface charge was found to be negative. That can be attributed to the free carboxyl group of HA. And then surface morpho uh, the morphology of the particles were analyzed using transmission electron microscopy. And it was found to be circular and no aggregates were found. Then we also check the nature of the formed uh, product using X-ray uh, diffraction analysis. And as can be seen, the pure DHA show the crystalline nature with these th three uh, signature peaks. However, HA and the final product showed amorphous uh, nature. This amorphous nature in therapeutic agents helps in better dissolution, absorption, and better bioavailability, solving the issues that are currently uh, being there for these drugs. Then the, uh, the drug loading efficiency was checked using UV spectroscopy and was found to be higher than the previous reported pegylated uh, conjugates. Then we also did some stability studies of these conjugated nanoparticles. So we kept these uh, self-assembled nanoparticles in pH 7.4 at room temperature for nine days. And we checked the size and PDI, which did not change significantly over days, suggesting that these particles exhibit excellent physical stability. Then moving to the cytotoxicity studies that we carried out in lung cancer cell line. So the cells were treated with the conjugated form of DHA and native DHA. 
uh, at different concentrations. And the cytotoxicity was analyzed using CCK8, which is a assay similar to MTT. And uh, then we had, uh, as can be seen at one microgram per ml, there was the cytotoxic effect of the conjugate was superior than that of the native DHA. This can be uh, because of the CD44 mediated enhanced uptake of this particle by cancerous cell, which is a well known phenomena in the previous uh, HA conjugates uh, known so far. Then we also checked since apoptosis is one of the important factor, how these chemotherapeutic drugs induce a uh, uh, or control tumor growth. So we saw that uh, as uh, we saw the nuclear morphology of this, these cells after treatment with the conjugated and the native DHA. And as can be seen, the nuclear nuclei was distorted, uh, as can be seen the, from the fluorescence microscopy images. Uh, in order to differentiate between the necrotic and apoptotic effect, we did an XN5 and propadime iodide staining as well. And we observed that the apoptotic effect of the conjugated DHA was comparatively higher than that of native DHA. So next, uh, we also checked reacting oxygen species generating potential of this conjugate because uh, this is uh, one of the methods or this is one of the uh, type how these uh, chemotherapeutics induce apoptosis and inhibit tumor growth. So as can be seen, we did a DC FDA assay, which is a fluorogenic dye. When internalized uh, by the cells, uh, they are cleaved or deacetylated by the esterases and it's a non-fluorogenic compound. But when they react with the reactive oxygen species, uh, they fluoresce because a fluorescein compound is there. So we check this phenomena using this flow cytometry and as can be seen, in uh, cells which were treated with the HADHA conjugate were uh, generating more of ROS as compared to the native DHA. Next, we also check the membrane, uh, mitochondrial membrane uh, potential loss because mem uh, mitochondrial uh, membrane potential loss is associated with the initiation of a pore complex which leads to the leakage of mitochondrial complex into the uh, cytosol of the cell. So herein, uh, we used a uh, uh, fluorogenic dye that is RH123 and using flow cytometry, we, compare, uh, we check the MMP loss assay. So this uh, fluorescent intensity is directly proportional to MMP loss. And we found that this was comparative in case of HA when uh, to the conjugate. So this data suggests that enhancement in ROS production of HADHA treated cells was compared to native and found to be higher. Uh, however, the MMP loss was comparable to that of native DHA. So next, here is the summary of these findings. So the hydrophobic drug, dihydroartemisinin, which is an anti-malarial drug right now uh, and being repurposed as an anti-cancer drug was uh, directly conjugated to hyaluronic acid for targeted delivery. The uh, generated amphiphilic meiotti self-assembled into nanoparticle when kept in aqueous solution. This when, uh, was when the cancerous cells overexpressing CD44 were treated with these nanoparticles, they interact via CD44 HA mediated interactions. And then by receptor mediated interactions, they are internalized under redox conditions, they disassemble and then they induce MMP loss and ROS production and causes apoptosis of the tumor cell. The in vivo studies for the same is ongoing. And this study has been already published in this journal last year. Here are my acknowledgments. My acknowledgement goes to my PhD supervisor, Dr. Amole K. Panda, for his scholarly inputs, my lab for their constant support, uh, BSI for providing me the opportunity to present my work on this platform, JNU NIDBT for the financial support and the facilities. And thank you all for your kind attention. I'll be happy to take questions.
Thank you very much, Ma'am Very interesting. There are a couple of questions, uh, and I actually might have one or two myself to ask you as well. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Professor Fritch's question. And this is saying that artemisinin is an anti-malarial drug. What prompted its repurposing to an anti-proliferative drug? Uh, it's already in use as an anti-proliferative uh, drug. Generally, FDA-approved drugs are repurposed. Nowadays, repurposing is in trend because, as I said, it is easier uh, to uh, like use in humans because they have been already tested in humans. And secondly, uh, introducing a new drug is always a lengthy process and it has safety and ethics issue. So it's in clinical trials as well for breast cancer studies, which is about to complete and in for humans. So it's been already reported to have anti-cancer activity. And in another question, how do you think you can improve this 13% uh, loading efficiency? Or efficacy okay. rather? Uh, basically, in terms of conjugates, this is one of the very appreciable loading efficacy because uh, people have tried pegylation in which using multi-armed pegylated forms have shown hardly 8% loading efficacy. So this is superior in terms of pegylation because uh, despite increasing the arms of pegylation, there were no more sites available for conjugation. However, it have more of COH and OH. So this is a pretty appreciable load as compared to the pegylated form. And, and, but, but how do you improve it? Do you have any thoughts about how, how this could be improved? Uh, one can improve by optimizing the reactions because most of the sites are available. It's a polymer. The hyaluronic acid is a polymer with a lot of COH groups available. So if one can add a spacer, linker, or uh, the reaction is optimized for that, then definitely the load can be improved. But uh, the formulation finally need an ample amount of uh, HA as well for the targeting. So this is with respect to the HA. So that is okay. I'm going to come back to HA with a few of my own questions. But we have another question from uh, Abir who is asking, are there any characters for drugs conjugated to HA or instead we can add HA drugs with low solubility? So I think the question is basically... Sorry, you were not audible. I can... Yeah, yeah, I'll just see. Are there any characters of drug conjugated to HA or instead we can add any hydrophobic drug with use? Uh, there is nothing. Uh, the only thing is that the uh, group should be available. For example, in case of dihydroartemisinin, hydroxyl group was available and we did the direct esterification. So that is the only thing. Uh, but here, uh, like we are changing the felicity of the molecule because uh, hydrophobic drugs, the solubility is the major issue. And, and you're using, so CD44, um, if I understood correctly, is that HA itself that's binding to CD44? Yeah, yeah. HA is known that's to bind to CD44 as well as RAM, the other receptor for it. I see. And uh, I suppose CD44 in one sense is a proliferation or activation marker, but it's yeah. also a marker for, in the immune system, at least for a lot of effector memory cells. Also yeah, yeah. in the time if you have them as progenitors. So... Yes, What's CD44. Of, you know, getting this nice specific uh, hits with CD44. Actually, CD44 is overexpressed by cancer cells, although it is present like all all over the cells. So, uh, getting a highly dense receptors there can basically help in the targeting. That's interesting. And finally, this this one is maybe a naive question. I use HA in the lab, but I use it for digesting very harsh tissues such as skin and etc. So for me, it's a very powerful dissociator. Is there any concern, uh, you know, I, I suppose with the dosing, you can change that, but is there any concern with uh, kind of tissue damage and non-specific damage? Um, no, no. How do you, the half-life of the drug is not very long and etc. It's a polysaccharide and it's a natural product. So it has been already in uh, use for a lot of formulation for humans. So I don't think it has any toxic effects because the acid group is from that COH group that is uh, there in the structure of the, it's just like galacturonic acid. That's a monomer and it's a polysaccharide of uh, N-glycosamine glycans. So it is not corrosive. Thank you so much for a very good discussion, Mamta. I really appreciate it. Thank Hope you. you have a great rest of the day.